Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. All right, let's do this. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to another edition of the Uper Farmer Cigar Garage Talks. How's everyone doing tonight? Hope you're all doing well and staying healthy out there. We all survived hunting season. Great. Hopefully you got, uh, were able to catch your quarry. Uh, if not, better luck next year. Oh, uh, what are we smoking tonight, huh? The 2012 by Oscar Valdez. And the beer... The Scottish Ale Lockdown. Now, if you did watch last week's video, you do know we're moving away from the EMS War Story series. It'll come back. Don't worry. Um, gone but not forgotten, all that stuff. We decided that December we were going to move into the conspiracy theory side of things. So that was kind of nice. Both the, uh, the Lockdown and the 2012... Um, have a bit of a story to them about conspiracy theories. Well, lockdown's okay. A little hoppy. Um, oh, before I forget, the ever wonderful chocolate pudding bread. Crowd favorite. Hmm. Also new to the video, I finally got one of my goals done. Uh, you can see there. I got a brand new jacket. I actually made this jacket with help from my wife. Um, I've always wanted to have a dedicated smoking jacket. But all the ones I'd find in stores or whatnot uh, just really weren't doing it for me. Um, so I built my own. I uh, sewed it. I am a bit of a seamstress. I won't disagree with that. I know how to use a sewing machine. Not perfect, not flawless, but I do enjoy it. I, I like how it turned out. So, damn it, I'm going to keep wearing it. So, anyway, enough with the formalities here. Let's talk about conspiracy theories. Um, I've shared the story, um, but I figured to kick this off. Let's start off um, with how I really got into conspiracy theories. It really boiled down to a patient I treated. Um, this won't be as long as most of my war stories. This will be a quick one. I'll come back and visit this one, fill in all the juicy details, but... I had a patient who spouted out conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory um, during a oh, about three hour transfer I had with him. Nonstop, nonstop conspiracy theories. Um, it was interesting. The guy he had a lot of psychiatric conditions and whatnot. Um, anyhow, we get him to the psych ward. And he has a moment of lucidness where he's with it. And he looks at us and he says, You know, I know I'm crazy. Me and my partner agree. Yeah, yeah, you are. Um, he said, but you know, even if 95% of what I say is fake, I said, it's more like, you know, probably hot closer to 98. Fine, he said, 98% of what I say is, is complete and utter made up bullshit. Doesn't that 2% scare the living daylights out of you? Um, and after three hours of conspiracy theories, including everything from local, national to global, uh, yeah, yeah, even if 2% of them were right, that kind of scares the crap out of me. I started collecting conspiracy theories at that time. Cataloging them, researching them, learning more about them. I even bought some cigars here that I'm going to be smoking for the rest of this series, which each one is themed for a very specific conspiracy theory. So we're going to try those out. Talk about those theories in particular. Have a little bit of fun with it through December. Because um, like I said in the previous video, December for EMS stories is just a depressing, depressing month. Um, spoiler alert, in January, we're going to dedicate January actually to mental health. Um, we're going to do a lot of talks about it. Um, I'm going to do some tricks of the trade, some tips and stuff to get through. Some of these really hard... Um, psychiatric months that we'll see on ambulance on the ambulance on the road but what are my conspiracy theories going to start with two classics the 2012 conspiracy theory the world was supposed to end the Mayan calendar told us 
that death and destruction was coming upon the earth. We're having the Great Reset. Now, as we sit in 2021, as I'm when I'm recording and, and going to be releasing this video, um, a lot of people are like, huh, maybe the Mayans are off by 10 years. You know, with everything going on, um, a lot of people are getting apocalyptic. I'm not a huge, uh, huge fan of trying to guess the end of the world. I mean, don't get me wrong, I have my fun with it. I'll make my guesses as much as anyone else. Um, and every now and then, in the darkest of dark, I'll, I'll think, is the world actually coming to an end? Well, why was 2012 amped up so much? What's the conspiracy theory behind that? Well, you have to understand, what does this conspiracy, what's the benefit from it? What do people gain? Well, it's control. Control through fear. Keep people scared. Have them not make rational decisions. That's so why the news media will, were boasting about 2020 claims, or 2012, excuse me, 2012 claims, saying that, you know, the end of the world was coming, the Mayan calendar was good for ratings, right? So people perpetuated it. That's one aspect of a conspiracy theory. There's actually quite a few of the 2012 one alone. That it was basically perpetuated and came up with so news media could keep you scared, keep you watching. Um, there's also said that the History Channel, uh, while their ratings were tanking, they saw that people were really interested in this Mayan calendar and how one crackpot said 2012 was when it was all coming apart. So they leaned into it, got people scared, so they will uh, watch more, consume more. <laughs> Excuse me. But there's also another fun theory. Um, used with the 2012 conspiracy. And that's that it was the government's test run. They wanted to see how the American people would react to a global catastrophe that's imminent. If you had a year's worth of time, would people take it seriously? Would they prepare? What would they do to prepare? Um... It might also spur some people to get prepared to, to buy some more food and rations and um, have stuff stockpiled. As I've talked about, again, I'm not a doomsday prepper. I am more of a farmer prepper, uh, making sure I have fuel and food and stores of stuff to get me through like tough winters um, to when we get back to the growing season. Believe it or not, I don't have, you know, millions of calories worth of food stashed away or underground bunkers or fuel stores or tons of ammunition, literal tons sitting around. No, I have more practical stuff, you know, rabbit food, uh, chicken food. We have uh, produce we've canned off the farm here and whatnot. Nothing too crazy. Just enough that if, let's say we were had a bad winter storm that lasted two, three weeks, or even a month, we were without power, without heat. Uh, we could survive, we could survive, even thrive quite easily with the stores we have, and that's more what I look for. We can make it through the winter, uh, if need be, with minimal refueling, minimal restocking. Well, they're saying that that 2012 was really pushed by the government to get people to prep more and to see what their reaction would be. Um, there are some people that are linking the 2012 exercise with what's currently going on today. Um, the government modulated, modified their response to what's going on with the beer flu um, to more match uh, better what they learned from the 20, uh, 2012 exercise. I don't give politicians that much credit, mind you. Um, I've worked with Met and... Uh, had discussions with a lot of these people. I don't think they're that devious or that forward thinking, but that wouldn't make it a fun conspiracy theory now, would it? So that's a couple of the ones from 2012. It was made up for ratings and it was made up for the government to test us so they know how we would respond when an actual emergency transpired. Now what about our buddy over here, Nessie? 
the lock down the Loch Ness Monster, which is kind of alluding to the locks of Scotland. What's the conspiracy theory there? Well, with many conspiracy theories, there's many different layers. Um, the first layer, of course, is that the person who took the photo wanted publicity, right? He wanted people to know him, his wife, he was a doctor, he got very famous, and it really amped up tourism um, in and around the Loch Ness area. Before that, Loch Ness was just some sleepy fishing village on a rather impressive lock or landlocked lake. Okay, well, yeah, keep that perpetuating that there's a, uh, a cryptid in your your vicinity. You know, people come to see it. Um, tourists can, or uh, tourist traps can make little memorabilia and little action figures and postcards and, and charge you up the wazoo and you're going to buy them. All right, level one conspiracy theories, I like to call those. Pretty plausible, uh, but not as much fun. Let's get fun with this. So the other fun part is the theory that they were actually testing submarines, um, pre-nuclear and nuclear submarines in Loch Ness. Um, and what that doctor actually saw was a periscope coming up in the, the first parts of a submarine. Um, there was secret submarine testing going on because the idea was who would be dumb enough to test a sub in a landlocked lake? You know, the lake had at one time been had access to the sea, but had long since been locked off. Uh, that's pretty stupid. Build a sub, test a sub when you're not in the open ocean. Um, but it is also the last place your adversaries would ever think to look uh, for submarine tests. In this nondescript lake, has no access to seas or oceans or anywhere else that's really navigable. They're not going to think to look there. That'd be the last place they'd expend resources. They'd instead expend resources at all your naval ports on the seas and on the oceans. Uh, it depends on who you ask. Some say it was the Germans were secretly testing subs. Some say it was the Americans. Some say it was Scotland themselves had an advanced submarine tactics team that built and tested subs there. Now that's a fun conspiracy theory, right? We could get behind that. We could have fun with that. The very idea um, of subs being tested there is laughable, which makes it credible. Um, it's so outrageous. No one could make that up, so it must be true. Stranger than fiction, right? Um, there are many people who say that the stranger these theories are, the more plausible they are. So anyway, there's two theories for you to think about. What is actually going on? Huh? Uh, was the 2012 Mayan calendar a marketing ploy, or was it a top-secret government plot to see how we Americans would respond in an actual emergency? Is a Loch Ness monster... A marketing ploy, or is it a devious plan for mass destructive submarine weaponry? Or even crazier, was 2012 actually predicted the Mayan calendar and some astrological um, Indiana Jones or Laura Croft was able to stop it from happening? And is there a prehistoric dinosaur that still lives in the lakes or in the loch at Loch Ness? That's just waiting for someone to get a good high quality image with it, get a little high five to prove that it exists. Who knows? That's the fun about conspiracy theories. You can dive deeper into them, you can think about them, you can train the old brain pan to think abstractly. And in the end, you can get a damn good laugh because usually they're pretty funny. Um, where are we going to land on this series? I don't know. Uh, should be fun. I'm excited for it. I love conspiracy theories. I love sharing with you guys. I hope you enjoy them. Um, anyway, I hope you all stay safe out there, and we'll see you on the next one.